Well, hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Hell Mean Power Hour Special Edition. I guess we can say that. Also special guest. And also special guest. <laughs> so, not only am I Rick and I'm here, we're going to talk about some awesome stuff, but we also got Danny Bennett as well. What's up, my brother? Here I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm here and I'm ready to talk. You ready to talk? Do. All right. Well, I'm ready to listen. So, <laughs> and also the also, also special guest names on the marquee. <laughs> we got the one and only beef bearded one himself, Gary. Here, what's up, man? Hey, I'm glad to be here and uh, happy Halloween, all that stuff, and spooky seasons and all that stuff, you know, all that stuff, <laughs> all things and stuff, spooky. Yeah. Like so we decided to get together and talk about this one. And uh, we are going to talk about Werewolf by Night, which is on the Disney Channel, of all things. It is a Marvel production. And actually, Danny told me about this last week when we got together to start talking about this. And wow, this is going to be a fun one, guys. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but I'm, I'm excited to talk about this one. <laughs> what do y'all think? I was I was surprised. Like I I I kind of I didn't avoid it, but I I knew it was there for a while. And then one day I just sat down and I said, "I'll give this a shot." Some people had said good things about it, and uh, you know that helped. Yeah. But um, I was I was kind of blown away. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. Either one of you like read the comic back in the day or anything like that? No, uh, I knew the horror stuff existed. I never um I never read any of it though because I wasn't. A, I wasn't around in the seventies to take this stuff out. So, and and that's the thing is, I think the only negatives that I've heard is coming from people that actually, I guess, love the comic and followed the storyline and all that. And of course, you know how this is. This is an hour long show, not not the podcast, but the actual movie that we're talking about is only an hour long. This could go an hour. Who knows? It is in the it is in the name of the show. <laughs> It's more an idea. It's an idea. It's a concept. Uh, but, you know, that's the only thing I've heard negative is coming from people that grew up with the stuff. And you're trying to cram a lot of information into one nugget of a show. And uh, you like that nugget? Yeah. And well, I just want to say thanks for adjusting so we can see Howard the Duck back there. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're, you're welcome. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think she's that's he's the focus, though, right? <laughs> I don't know, that could be the next special presentation. Uh, I would be down for that for sure. You know? <laughs> yep. Gary's a big fan. No doubt about it. So, but yeah, man, let's, let's, let's bust this one open, man. Let's get into werewolf by night. Uh, it's everything we like at Helming. It really is. It, it sets up like tons of movies that we always talk about that we admire. And it just falls in that, that, uh, category of it's a helming i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and say it it's a helming classic i'm jumping the gun whatever that means yeah <laughs> well it doesn't mean anything it's a helming <laughs> classic <laughs> so the thing is being shot in black and white you even get the cigarette burns like the changing of the reels yeah all these nice touches to really refer back to you know, Lon Chaney, Lon Chaney Jr., Wolfman. Uh, you guys get the same feel from that as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gary, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, like the use of shadows and black and white. And it, it, it's like, of course, you know, exponentially, you know, more vibrant than it would be in 1940s, 30s black and white movie. But oh, sure. that's because there's new, new, new tech and new new cameras and you know, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's got that feel for sure. Yeah. So and it benefits from having production value. You know, again, you, you get a crisper image, even though they tried to give it some, like you said, the, the cigarette burns and the, and the throwbacks to the, to the old cinema, but they also had, you know, crystal clear images that they had great fight choreography, you know, stuff that you don't really even consider. Yeah anymore Man. because there's so much money pumped into these these uh these cinematic offerings that uh they just didn't have back when they were making those universal monster movies 
So how about just the whole general opening of this thing, right? He's walking into the room. You get this backstory of these hunters fighting evil, and they're gathering around the world's greatest monster killers into this one area where there happens to be the guy that owns the Bloodstone. So if you're in the Marvel Universe, you kind of know where we're heading with that. But, man, I mean, what a setup. All these characters. Who's your favorite character besides our main character, you think? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, you know, the uh, Harriet Sansom Harris, I, I looked her name up. I knew her from Frasier, where she played BB, but the, the widow, uh, yeah. she steals the show. She's so <laughs> over the top. <laughs> and I mean, I guess, I guess you're probably asking which hunter. I mean, there was, there was, you know, Steven Tyler in white there. I, mean, <laughs> I didn't expect to see him there, but you know, he was... <laughs> I, I, well, I love that. You, you know me. So, you know, I love the, the whole, the, the tournament setup where it's like, we're going to have a contest and we have all these specialists and they, and they don't explain who they are and they just show up in this, this, um, what, what a, in the lodge. What a great place, too. <laughs> it's awesome. It's funny you said you brought up the character because when we were watching, me and me and Becky, Becky's like, uh-oh, David Bowie's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what say you, Gary? Who do you, who do you kind of like in this bunch? Well, well, you know, the bearded guy ain't bad, but you, you kind of knew he was the <laughs> least agile of the bunch. That he was going to be dropped early. Um, but I love the whole feel of the lodge aspect, too. It's kind of like, Hey, you're going to your, your dad's like, you know, Elks Club. You right. might see a head on the wall. And all these heads are like monster heads that they've slain over the years. And it just, they just look really cool. And, you yeah. know, it's this freaking round room, which you know <laughs> is going to get used later in grand fashion, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just a great setup. And you get the introduction to all these legendary uh, monster killers that are in line to inherit the bloodstone and that's what makes this interesting because they're all kind of standoffish to each other they're all trying to be all tough looking and you know throwing shade at each other and this reminded me of an like, amplify have you seen um the beast must die from from the 70s oh yeah it, it felt like that where if you guys don't know that movie basically they get invited to a house all these people and one of them is the werewolf. You're supposed to find out in the end of the movie which one of them is the werewolf. You right. find it a little, a little faster on this one, but if yeah. it had that, that feel to me, that same kind of plot setup. Yeah, not a great movie, but <laughs> but it's interesting. It could be a good movie. I'll give you that. the The concept is good. So, but yeah, I mean it, that's one that you know it's not a bad idea. Somebody should could rerun with that. Uh oh, we're moving rooms. Where are you heading, Danny? Danny's traveling. Oh, <laughs> uh, you folks, uh, I know you like to listen to the podcast, but you need to check out the video because you get to see something that uh, is happening in, in real time here. <laughs> I, I tell you, that camera's crisp, baby. He, he didn't like go out of focus at all. I know. You know? It's, um, it, I, I had to, because of uh, the aforementioned nap, situation um my wife was taking a nap so i had to go into a general area it was starting to get kind of active so right. i was trying to stay muted while i wasn't talking and and then um you know there was a a silent signal of can i use the microwave and i was like let me just go into the room now that lois, lois is done with her uh, nap so here i am um oh. in one one thing and and i've seen werewolf by night three times now wow one three times. that i have to make yeah, I watched it that first time, and then I watched it a second time. Right after I talked to you, I got Lois to watch it with me. Yeah. And then I watched it this morning to kind of, like, refresh. I don't know what any of those hunters names are, except, you know, the, the bearded guy introduces himself. Yeah. And I immediately forgot the name. So, I mean, like, they're a cool. It was hard for me to come up with my favorite because I couldn't even, like, name them. I can't even – I mentioned that that one character by – um by her you know, actress's name because I don't remember her name. It, it's <laughs> kind of it's kind of an in out thing, you know. the The story comes together so quick, and that's kind of the charm of it. You know, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't try too hard to, to you know give you a backstory on everybody. You know, I don't think some of those people were introduced by name. <laughs> no time for the old in and out, darling. Just hit a read a meter. 
<laughs> but yeah, you had um, Elsa Bloodstone, which, you know, the whole right. idea of her being there is this is her birthright. So because her, her father's dead now. So this is mine. But, you know, the word Bloodstone, maybe the guys are going to watch some species movie. I was kind of disappointed in that sense. <laughs> but um, I, I digress. Um, but yeah, that's the whole through this movie that she's she's here just to to win the prize to, to to best her whatever opponents but one guy has had more more uh track kills than anybody else by far so <laughs> he's ready he's ready to, to fuck some shit up but that was a <laughs> tr- tr- phrase yeah 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 it's of course again the the bragging rights everything going on and then how about you were talking about the widow what do you got? What is that? Oh, it's pumpkin head. Pumpkin head. <laughs> Trump's everything. If he was in this movie, it'd be over. I mean, yeah. Well, it, hey, what if what if they went to the do the hunt for the bloodstone, and the bloodstone yeah. was attached to pumpkin head? Right. Yeah, that'd been a bad situation. And then Lance Henriksen, Henriksen shows up as his character from Quick and the Dead <laughs> in, in full from regalia. Ace Hanlon. Yes. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, um, the widow, her whole performance when she's like hunching over on the casket. <laughs> Did you oh notice on the back, the back of the casket says this end up? <laughs> I, I noticed that this last time too, that, that it said that. I And what about that whole thing? What about the, wow. the turning the key to, to turn him into Zoltar? There? <laughs> When I die, I'm going to get me a shaman. I'm just going to wake up randomly just to say, hey, you didn't see that coming, did you? You know? <laughs> wow. So, yeah, he gives the whole story of what's going to happen from the dead. They basically made a robotic version with his corpse <laughs> for him to tell the story of what they have to do in order to win the Bloodstone. And that sets the wheels in motion. From there, it, it you kick into gear, right? They basically draw straws to see who goes into this area first. Yeah, the bloodstone has been attached to a creature that they have to go and slay, and whoever kills it, and whoever is the last to survive, be- becomes the the new bloodstone. Yeah, and the and, hunters are already hunted. You know, and I, I like I like the hunters though. You know, they all give without it having too much. They all give kind of like a yeah. You know, there's the one guy who's like, well, what about her? You know, why does she get to hunt? You know, we've all earned our our place here, right? And you know. Again, the bragging rights. You've got the bearded guys like I've got was it 52, 53 kills? 57 kills. 57. I mean, that's that's what I was gonna say. I think you were you were only introduced to them by their kill count. Right. Right. I mean, it's like you know, she walks through and touches them as 57 kills and you know, 32 kills, and or I think 27 <laughs> kills is that the uh, the guy who said, you know, we earned our right, that, that guy. Yeah. Uh, but really, I guess that's how they're, you know that's how they're introduced because that's the most important fact about them and again this is that thing that we love in these movies it goes right back to mean guns right yeah, yeah. see so they get you got david bowie dude you got bearded dude you got the uh, <laughs> kung fu dude right <laughs> you got blade over there <laughs> yeah he definitely had some blade vibes <laughs> to, to, to tell you the truth you know the fact that they're there and they most of them know each other's reputations and what they can do and this is not told saying, hey, remember that time I killed that vampire in Morocco or some <laughs> stuff like that? It would really slow down the pacing of an already greatly paced, you know, 53 minutes of what you got here. Right, right, right. But yeah, they draw straws. They've got the, the beast confined in a certain area and all the hunters are going there one by one. And uh, our uh, the guy that we're most associated with goes in first. And he's sneaking around, and then every time you hear, how, how about that tuba with the flames on it? I, I was about to say, are we not going to address oh. the tuba? Like, like, as he walks in, it's like, oh, well, and you also get accompanied by a tubist with, <laughs> with fire coming out of the tuba. Like, what is that? Is that a reference I should get? Because that was amazing, but really random. I love Weird. it because the, the sound is more like an alarm of the next one is coming, but you literally yeah. have a guy blowing a tuba that makes the sound. That is such an old school forties type mentality of having somebody there to signify. I, I love incredible. it. 
It's like, hey, the guy with the with the flute isn't good enough. Maybe I got right. that flaming tuba, you know? I mean, somebody if come, it had somebody, been somebody some, with a flute, it would be a different movie, man. It'd one flaming tuba coming up. Somebody, somebody called that guitar player from, from, the, from the desert. So you could like, yes. Uh, to... Mad Max. <laughs> so, yeah, man. And then as this goes on, they, they when the, the fighters or the, the monster killers confront each other, they're supposed to battle. But the problem is, is our hero that we're walking with runs into the daughter of Bloodstone. And he said, it's best if we just go our separate ways and pretend this never happened. So you already know something's going on. Because when they had the meeting before of how many kills they had, he claimed to have over 100. And they're like, really? And he's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is, I mean, and... and watching it for the second time you know of course the first time you know there's something up with him from yeah. the second you see him but like you're like of course he, he's he doesn't belong here yeah yeah so yeah. you know he's he's over here he's out of place kind of... but his goal with all of this is to find the creature and get the creature out of there before any harm comes to it because he's friends with it who happens to be man, man thing. thing yeah so of course, I had to explain Man Thing to Becky. I was like, "Well, you know, Swamp Thing, meet Man Thing." <laughs> yeah. Uh, which of my favorite things about him is, you know, and that's right. Right, we see Man Thing in a production, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Man Thing, aka Ted, because he tells me, <laughs> "Go look for Ted." Go look for uh, Ted. <laughs> um. But the fact that there's a guy in a suit, for the most part. Well, I love about that. If you know the behind the behind-the-scenes stuff, yeah, with some with some CG thrown in for effect, obviously, but mostly you got a suit, and I, I can appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always better. The combination of the effects to me is just always a, a better sale for everything than just pure CGI. But, well, you uh, know, if they had CGI, they'd be trying too hard to make you know make him move, you know, make make the the plants like creep around him. All this right. stuff they can do. Yep. To kind of hide the fact that there's that uncanny valley even with a monster you know yeah. and since they didn't do that and you got a you got a cool looking monster walking around it, it works great i mean i think they in my mind they captured exactly man thing and wow i mean i was really impressed with that but yeah he ends up finding him and saying look i'm gonna try my best to find a way to get you out of here and then i'll get out and we'll just split right but you know things get a little more uh, confusing and you know, uh, well, I forgot what I was going to say. What about Elsa killing that dude with his own arm? Man, just overall, the fight scenes in this thing are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude sticks his arm out like he's shooting at her <laughs> and he sticks his arm out from behind the, the, the door and she chops it off with, yeah. uh, with the, the, uh, the bearded dude's axe. And then they get to fighting and she finds his arm in a, in a thing and shoots him in the head with it. You know, it's, it's good yeah, stuff. I mean, you get, you get the battle Royal hunger games idea of there's going to be random right? we weapons laying out there. You find them and you use them. And this dude found this cool arm <laughs> arrow launcher. I mean, it's ba basically a little crossbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, wow. Who wouldn't want that? Right. <laughs> well, you know, he, he got it. He sure did, but not for long. <laughs> uh, so yeah, man. Go, go ahead. Uh, uh, so, what about the the uh, the crypt with like the uh, the yep. marquee signs? Like you're at the Bijou, <laughs> you know, they got everybody's name and their birth and their death. And it's it's backlit. So you know, she's in the, the crypt. She ends up locked in the crypt with Jack. We won't get into why. I don't. Even, I think I missed the first time. I was like, Wait, when did they get locked in there? Right. Well, you know, because you have to. They have to talk or whatever. But like. You know they've got these these cool you know sepulchers they've got these these uh um uh, you know slabs and on on each one of them is like the name of the the hunter that's buried there and it's got their their birth and death and it's all like you know it's like the the marquee at the at the burger king you know they got the letters on it you know that you can kind of <laughs> remove or put on there and it's got a light behind it it's 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 almost nouveau looking you know it looks yeah. like something you'd see in dark city not really something you'd see in this old manor lodge which kind of throws it in like what time period is it right. it's obviously contemporary but yeah. it seems like it should be medieval or you know yeah yeah oh. i mean just the weapons in general when you look at them you're like this is shouldn't be of our time right 
we find out later there's there's magic involved in the bloodstone and you know right. she can just like blast on the wall here lies yeah. possibly you you know <laughs> that's a good point oh. well and all the guards have like taser you know like they got get cattle prod sticks so i mean like there's something quasi futuristic about it you know yeah. but we'll yeah. never know because they'll yeah. probably never make another one i hope they do <laughs> i think maybe this draws enough attention and again the fight scenes are great and it gets down to where uh the two are locked into uh, the thing there together and he explains the story of why he's there why he didn't want to fight her and she he's not really a threat to her at the time and this is where she has to go talk to Ted and he's going to find it. He found this little explosive to go put on a wall and try to blow it up, which is kind of a little comical kind of Abbott, Abbott and Costello kind of thing where he yeah. throws it and it's supposed to stick and it does it and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> which is pretty comical. And he ends up breaking uh, the wall down and getting man thing out of there. Right. But the stone, you know, they use that grappling type deal that grabs onto it and it pulls it back off and lands on the ground. And dude reaches down to touch it and it like blast him across the, the floor there. And that's when they all realize, hmm, if that stone did that to you, then you're not a hunter. Then you're a monster. You're a monster. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, that, I mean, so, so we can we could go through plot by plot point, but like I said, it's a it's a short movie. Yeah. Fifty three minutes. It's got some high points. I mean, it's it's well done. The characters are interesting. It's got a lot of comedy in it. Right. The effects are great. I'm not wrapping it up. I'm just saying, like, we're missing plot points here and there because yeah. we're really yeah. just kind of talking about the things we like. Well, and you know? we don't want to give too much away. But uh obviously it's in the title. Guess what? He's a werewolf, y'all. <laughs> Only at night. <laughs> Only at night, though. Only at night. So but I, I think you just made a good point. So what is, Gary, what's your selling point of this? What's your big takeaway of this show? Well, uh, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, it's called Werewolf, but now you do get a werewolf. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, he looks kind of like a, like a hairy, agile, night, night crawler type, type werewolf. He, he's, he's, he's slim. He doesn't get like all bulbous. He's kind of stays the same size. But, um, Man thing is the selling point for me for this. And it's fortunate and unfortunate because this is called Werewolf by Night. <laughs> but you love Man Thing to death. He's like this 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 Groot, this Andre the Giant Brood Squad character that you gotta love that's there to protect our man who yeah. has the wolf forced out of him through through magic. Because he was he was just kicking ass all on his own. Right. And um I just love the relationship. That's that's my biggest takeaway is the relationship between those two. Sure, because we've seen it a bunch of times. But you, you always love the, the the man and monster thing. And I don't want to call Chewie a monster, but it goes way back to, to Star Wars. You know, Han sure, and yeah. Chewie. He can, he can understand what man thing is saying. I can't. I don't think anybody else does. But he knows what he's saying. You know, like Han and Chewie. You know, it, it, it's right. I mean, that that's man, a great point. I mean. We've never got to really see Man Thing in any kind of action besides the comic. So to see him use his abilities, dude, when he picks up the uh, the widow <laughs> and kind of you know puts a Jack's stop to things, her, jacks her stuff up, brother. Pretty dang awesome. Pretty dang awesome. So, all right, Danny, what's your what's your takeaway with this? What do you think's your big selling point on this? I'm you know I'm gonna stick with. There, there are so many cool things in, in this and, and it's uh, such a tight package, but I'm, I'm going to stick with, uh, with the, with the, the widow, yeah. you know, her, her performance is over the top. She becomes kind of the main villain by the end, you know, right. there's no way to like her. She hates everybody that you end up liking and she's, you know, appalled that you would save man thing. And, and, uh, and she's, she's ready to slay her, you know, I guess stepdaughter and, and, uh, and, and the wolf man that you end up liking, she, but she does such a great job of just being over the top. And, and I've been a fan of, of her since, like, like I said, in Frasier, she played his, uh, his agent and yeah. she was over the top in that too. She would do anything to get him the next part, you know, including like she'd go out on a ledge and pretend she was going to jump so that he could talk her down so that he could negotiate a better price at the, the radio station, you know, because she was crazy. 
and she brings that energy to this as well. And I think that, you know, just she's the one that carries this whole thing through from beginning to end until she gets, you know, magmatized. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have a, the, the, the epitome of, of the evil in the group. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for or me, Tyler. <laughs> <or> Stephen Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I mean, we didn't talk. I mean, we, we said the action scenes are awesome. The fight scenes are incredible. Uh, it's a lot grittier than most of the Marvel stuff, too. I mean, you got arms yeah. being chopped off and all kinds of stuff here. It's 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 a little on the gruesome side in some points. So for for Marvel, I was really surprised. And, and that's kind of funny because they they were light on the effects. Yeah, but but heavier on the gore, I guess, like. And it wasn't like gore. It wasn't extended, but it was a lot right. of amputations and, right. and but like but then when they had a chance to to show a werewolf transformation, they did it in the shadow. In shadow. I mean, which and, is which is so good. Yes. And that's that's my selling point for this. And this is it may upset people, I don't know. Because I do love the howling. I do love dog soldiers. I do love American Werewolf in London. But when I think of a werewolf or a wolf man, the wolf man, this is what I want. He is exactly what I want because it's not some CGI, you know, rampaged looking big 14 times his own size and a pair of jeans, werewolf with a long snout. Kind of like the picture behind me right here that I've got. It doesn't right. look like that. He don't look anything like that. He looks like a dude who's turned into part wolf. And I love the fact that he's small, agile. Obviously powerful because he breaks through those bars. He's jumping from <laughs> one side of the ceiling to the other. This yeah, is what I want in a werewolf. And what about that? You know, the jumping where he's just like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, it, it's, 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 I don't want to say hokey. It's just campy. Yeah. It's the right kind of camp. Right. It's Thunderdome out of Thunderdome. See, because he right. was in Thunderdome. <clears> he was in he like was the bird game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, was in the birdcage, but they needed that for Howard the Duck. Yeah. I, I've always been more pulled to the werewolves that still have a lot of human features. And and again, it's more of a were, were, uh, wolf man is what we normally, you know, call it to that point. But, you know, I think about Oliver Reed, Curse of the Werewolf. To me, that was always like the ideal scary looking wolf man to me. I, I know it's a dirty word, but the, the wolf man remake with Benicio del Toro kind of reminded me of that. Sure. The, the way they kept the features minimal, but yep. you know, wolf-like. Yep. One yep. of my favorite things about the, that scene where he transforms is, you know, they, they show the shadow of what's happening. So there's even gruesome there, but the fact that the widow is so stupid to stand so close to his cage, which he knows <laughs> what he's going to become. Like, yeah. oh, she got grabbed. Oh man. What a, he's, he's got me, you know? Right. <laughs> she, and he's so, he's, over, He's so much more than just a wolf man, a big, strong, powerful beast. I mean, he's very quick, very agile, filled with rage, almost like the Hulk. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's what makes it work for me. Uh, you know, it, it's it's the Hulk. Well, really. and to Gary's point about the cage, you know, yeah, yeah, she had she had hubris to to you know stand within arm's reach of that cage, those cage bars. That was just foolishness. But I think you know. <laughs> Her whole thing about sticking him in there, the cage with Elsa, he thought, oh, you know, she she thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch him tear her to pieces, and obviously he's gonna get her first because they're caged up together, and you know, he had he had done the whole like, I'm gonna transform, I'm gonna get a smell of you, and starts like like yeah. sniffing her yeah. hair and sniffing that, her. That, that, that quick that quick touch was nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's like, I gotta remember you. She's like, does this work? He said worked once <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean but it, and i i totally think that you know she was leaning in to, to, to watch the uh her uh her her stepdaughter get in the shredder but uh you know again it was a it was a dumb move yeah uh, yeah the stiffer because you couldn't pee on her in a marvel film marcus territory <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of that. That. <clears throat> so yeah man uh to me I just find this a necessary watch. If you like all the Marvel stuff, I think it's a definite given. If you're a horror fan, especially if old, the original, you know, the original trilogy, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, this really gives you a nice throwback to that. But then it gives you so much more and introductions to more characters. 
I'm sold on it, man. I hope that they continue with this. What say you, Gary? Oh, hell yeah. Especially, you know, the ending you get to, to where, you know, e evil is vanquished, you know, well, well the, 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 the wicked who's uh, opposing them because she wants to kill everybody apparently is vanquished and you get this this nice ending of our, our werewolf and in man thing just chilling like yeah it's <laughs> so like like waiting for their next adventure or something just right. had, just having a spot of tea yeah <laughs> outside and he's cold because he's, he's naked of course he's lost his clothes but um right. It, just, just, just listening just, to "Over the Rainbow" too on the record. Over play. the Rainbow, that was a nice touch. I loved. Yeah. I loved when you go again. If you've seen Wizard of Oz, you know it's going to go from black and white to color. Right. right. It does it here, you know, with, with new technology, and it felt totally organic. Yeah, I, I thought it was wonderful. You know, when she has the bloodstone, yeah. You know, now she sees the world in a whole different light, and it goes to color. Yeah. So you get that great ending of our our, our heroes our, our our buddies are hot and chewy, just waiting to, to, to leave and go on our, our next adventure, you know? Yeah. He, he brings him that little cup of coffee in his giant man thing. Hand. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I agree. I'm, I really like the, the whole, uh, you know, uh, the whole Conan ending. You know, she yep. she sits back in the leather armchair and, you know, they go, well, I'm here to serve, man. I'm just like, better start cleaning all this crap up, you know? Like, <laughs> and then she, she leans back because now she's the Lord of the Manor with the bloodstone, which up until now has been the only thing in color, which was also a cool touch. You know, right. everything else is black and white. So the bloodstone that shines crimson in all of its scenes, it's a, it's yep. a sweet little uh, little detail. <laughs> You know, it's not like it's something you wouldn't notice, but it's it's a it's a cool set piece. So I'm gonna say this is a bona fide Helming recommendation. Then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I think it's fantastic. I think it needs to carry on, and I hope they do. I've been kind of disappointed in the run of the the latter Marvel shows here lately. Uh, I did like Moon Knight, but I don't know. The rest of them just kind of falling short for me. So this really made me kind of go. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's just a fatigue with, sure. with superheroes. You know, they, it, it was a, it was a selling point for movies for so long that yep. they could do so much with it now. And this was a, this was a happy departure from that because it was kind of, it had enough things different about it that it seemed fresh. Yeah. I do yeah. like them introducing these characters that are lesser known and bringing them into the light of everybody. So go ahead, Gary. I mean, She-Hulk done it brilliantly. If you haven't watched She-Hulk, I, I recommend anybody to watch it, even if you're not a She-Hulk fan. I, I mean, it. It, it takes every aspect of this is what's wrong with the Marvel Universe to the point of making Kevin Feige a, a, a robot who comes up with <laughs> scenarios. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> it's it's wonderful because it, it turns the superhero world on its head, kind of like the boys does, but the boys does it with, with a lot more violent blood and gusto. Yep, right. And, and um. Can watch the boys too. It's spectacular. <laughs> yeah, the boys uh, is good. Um, but yeah, I love the way it does that. I love the way this, this does its own thing, and I hope for not maybe not a full on series, maybe like a a, a quarterly thing. Mm -hmm. Like every every quarter, you'll get a, a a new werewolf by night thing. Be great. Um, it was a it was a special presentation, so there's no expectation to have to continue it. But they can they can stick it in there somewhere. You can now stick that they it. postpone Blade. <laughs> Right, yeah. So, I mean, hey, do, do, and being we're talking about the boys and she hulk and all that, I, I have to trump you with uh, Peacemaker. Peacemaker's good. Peacemaker's real good. He's I've rewatched it a few times. That's been my favorite. <laughs> if if you have Spotify, James Gunn has curated the Peacemaker playlist. I listen to it constantly at work. You know, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, I think that's going to kind of be it. Would you, would you had something else there? Oh, I was just going to agree, and and I, I appreciate you also liking She-Hulk. I mean, I don't know. She-Hulk did what She-Hulk does in the comic, and I did actually collect She-Hulk for a pretty long stint, and that's what it did, was it broke the fourth wall to yeah. make fun of everything that was going on in the Marvel Universe around it. And and that's what they did with the show. And I'm not going to say people just didn't get it. If people didn't like it, they didn't want to watch a sitcom about yeah. She-Hulk, and, and yeah. I get that. And, and they don't need to bag on it either, you know, because if it isn't for you, that doesn't mean it isn't for somebody else. And Daredevil gets slut shamed, which is I, I love Daredevil. <laughs> when he's, he's tattooed on my arm right there, you know. Um, but he gets slut shamed. He takes the walk of 
game with the, with the shoes off, and it's hilarious. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, I think that's going to be it for this one. So do yourself a favor. Go to Disney or wherever you're pirating your movies and check out Werewolf by Night. I'm not supposed to say that, am I? Oh, well. Yeah. Anyway. Where, where, wherever your Disney films are found. That's right. <laughs> hey, Shelly, you're six ninety nine for Disney Plus or don't. Right. Or maybe get a free trial. Who knows? Maybe. Or if you have somebody else's password. You know, that always works out handy, too. That, you know, Danny's is XY4. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, Gary, as think? always, always great to have you on. Is this the first? Is this first time we've had you on Hell Ming or no? We've had you on before, haven't we? Before, probably, yeah. Long time ago, probably. As long as I have to edit, I just gotta be there. To, uh, I'll, I'll be on whatever you guys want me to be on. You know, it, it's that thing where we talk to each other a lot, pretty normally, so it's hard to know who show has been on whose and all that. You kind of get confused right. after a while, but you're always welcome, my friend. You know that. Good to have you here. Still waiting for that remaster of Billy John to come out. And we need that in our lives, <laughs> y'all. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go ahead and plug your stuff real quick, man. Uh, you can find most of what I do if you go to your podcatcher under the Butcher Shop banner. That's Cine Beef Podcast, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, uh, Last Call Torches, which is um, mine, Cameron Scott, and Lee Russell's Love Letter to Walter Hill's films. Yeah. Um, we do... Oh, the RNE one next. I forget what it's called. Burning for Belushi. Springwood. Yeah, Burning for Springwood's up there. Well, whatever comes out comes out. Um, I've been I've been sick like the last few weeks. I haven't been uh, doing anything as far as editing goes. So uh, I'm getting I'm getting over the change of weather BS. Oh so man. Look, look for more content for for a spooky season and beyond. Um, I'm supposed to have Kate and Matt for from from Britain and the Eternal Sunshine of the Not So Spotless Mind. I got it right, y'all. Right? Yeah, yeah. To watch something so stupidly American, that I, I told him this is what you're gonna watch, and I want to hear you guys talk about it. But um, <laughs> it's it's wonderful. Um, it's always fun to do this with you guys and do it in general. It's it's, it's wonderful therapy. He likes doing it. I like I like doing it, man. I wouldn't have thought that you'd been sick. You you look good. I just like yo know, sign this stuff. It, it it's it, yeah. it comes and goes. I, I told Rick I, I'm always. R- r- I'm fine until we start recording and then my nose starts itching like crazy. So I'm like, and people think I'm on cocaine, I guess. So they're not getting enough done to be on cocaine. That's, that's right. Yeah. You're pretty lazy if you're on cocaine. That's for sure. Yeah. So I'm lazy, you know, either way, but yeah, well, on cocaine, I should be getting some stuff done. All right. For Gary, myself and Mr. Danny B. Y'all have a good one, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Happy Halloween. <laughs>